Hey, this is Jesse Tula from BatchFrame.com, and recently I've been doing some more work with pseudo effects. And while I was in the presetFX.xml file, I noticed that there's now an effect that uses the pop-up control. And so we can now see how to use it, and I can show you how to use it in your own effects. Now, what the pop-up control looks like is a layer control, but instead of having a list of layers, it's a list of whatever you want it to be. So let's take a look at how to create this. I'm just going to create a very simple effect that just has the one pop-up control, and we'll take a look at how we can create it and use it in After Effects. So let's start out, like every other effect, by just opening bracket effect. And we'll just call this pop-up control. And we'll set the name as the same. And we'll close this. Okay, now to create the pop-up control itself, you start it out just like you start out every other control. And that's with the name, pop-up, and it's capitalized. So capital P, pop-up, and just like all the rest of them, the first attribute is the name attribute. And so we'll set the name as just pop-up control and the part that's after the equal sign is what's going to show up as the name. So now the main part of this, which is the pop-up string, and that's all lowercase with an underscore separating, and this is where you're going to set what shows up on the list. So for my list, I'm just going to use the numbers 1 through 5, but they'll be the list of numbers written out rather than the digits. And now this is incorrect right now. What we need to do is separate these so After Effects knows to use each of these different numbers as a different item in the list. And to separate those, we're going to use the bitwise OR operator. Now, that's actually the vertical line, which is the shift backslash key. Uh, so that's right above the enter key, you wanna hold down shift and backslash and it'll give you that vertical line. So we're just gonna separate each of these different elements with that vertical line. And so now After Effects will recognize each of these as a different item. So now all we have to do is set which one of these we want to show up as the default selection. And what we're gonna put in here is the index of the item we want to be selected. Now their index is based on the order in which they're written. So the first thing you write is gonna have an index of one. And in this case, my last index, which is my fifth item, is gonna have an index of five. Now, in this case, their indexes are the same as what they're written as. However, no matter what your items are here, it's still gonna have that index starting with one and counting up. So we'll just have my starting index be one but it could be uh, any number one through five here. And that's it, we can close up the control with a forward slash and a bracket. So you can see that I'm, I've just written this in its own document and that was just to keep things simple. Now we can copy this and paste it into that presetfx.xml file and we'll paste it right under the last one. Let's get rid of this extra effects close. And we'll save this and we can open up After Effects. And let's create a new composition and a new solid. And this is what we'll put our control on. So let's just open up that script editor. And we'll just apply it. So app.project.activeitem.selectedLayers0. So just the first selected layer, which is the only selected layer. And we're gonna add an effect and we'll add the property, which we named pop-up control. So we'll run this and you can see that it was added back here with our names and everything set. And here is our list. So you can see by default that one was selected. And if we open this up, you can see we have our other four options. So now that we have this control, how do we use it within our project? Well, let's just create a text layer and I'll just write uh, default here. 
So let's use this control to control what the default text says. So we'll open up the source text expression and we'll just give ourselves some more room here. And first let's get that control. Let's get that pop-up control and set it equal to a variable. So I'm just gonna say variable number is equal to, and then I'll pick with that control. Let's just get some more room here. We'll get this error. That's okay. All right, so let's pick with this control. And we're going to put dot value at the end. Now, this is going to get a little bit messy in here working in After Effects. So I'm actually going to copy this. And I'm going to take it back out to our text editor. And we'll just create a new document. Let me paste that first line in here. And let's just tell it that we're working with JavaScript. OK, so we set our number equal to our uh, pop-up controls value. And it's important to have this dot value at the end. Otherwise, this is not going to work. So the value is going to be the same as that index that we set back in the default property. So this value will be whatever is selected. It'll be the index of whatever option is selected. So now we want to set the text equal to something. So I'm just going to create an empty variable. We'll call it the text. And this is what that text is going to end up being set to. And right now I'm just going to set it to a blank string. So that's those two quotation marks. It's just a blank string. It has nothing in it. And so because in this pop-up control, it's only going to be one of those five options, and it will always only be one of those five options, we can use a switch case statement to decide what to do depending on which one is selected. Now, if you've never used a switch case statement, they're pretty simple. First thing you do is just type switch. And in parentheses, we're going to put the variable that we want to look at, which in this case is the number. So switch num, and then opening and closing brackets. And in here, we're going to have all of our different cases. So basically, each case is a different value for this num variable. So in the case that num is equal to 1, that's what this says. Then you'll have a colon. Then you're going to say, so in the case that it's 1, do this. And in this case, we're just going to set the text equal to something. So the text equals the number one. And you want to make sure that after each case, you put a break. If you don't do this, then it's going to move on to the next case. So even if the case was one, let's say we add a case two. Colon. The text equals the number two. and break again. If we forgot the break in this case one, then what it's going to do is say the number ends up being one, it'll go, come to here, set the text equal to the number one, but then because it doesn't break, it's going to go right on to case two, and then also set the text equal to the number two. So this will be completely removed, basically. So you want to make sure that you always add these breaks at the end to make sure that once it sets this and does what's in this case statement, it breaks to the end. Now you can have several lines of code here. You can have several different things happen. Just make sure that it ends with this break command. So we'll just put in a different case for each of our five different options. And the last thing that always comes in a switch case statement is the default. Now, what the default is, is if the number, if the num variable ends up being anything other than 1 through 5, which it shouldn't be able to do, but just in case, you're going to set the default. What happens if it gets through all these and none of those co were correct? What do you want it to do? So I'll just set the text equal to error. Now, we shouldn't ever have come across this, but it's good habit to get into to always include a default in your switch case statements, uh, especially for situations other than expressions within After Effects. And in this case, since the default is the last one, we don't need to put that break. 
So now that it's gone through that and it's chosen the case and set the text, we can now just write the text and that is what our text is going to use as its source text. So let's copy all of this now that it's been created. And we'll go back to After Effects and we'll paste it in here. So we can hit enter. And you can see up here now in the composition we have one selected and the number one is written. If we change it to two, the number two. If we change it to five, the number five. Now, now this is just a very simple example of what this can be used for, but, but say you're creating like motion graphics templates, you can have your own color themes rather than having the colors just shift hue or something by control, you can have your own themes and set the colors based on which theme is selected. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different options uh, and different things you can do with this sort of control. And you don't necessarily have to use the switch case statement to figure out what option is selected. You can use a series of if statements. Uh, you can do a lot of different things. But yeah, that's pretty much it as far as the pop-up control is concerned. I'm pretty happy that we can now finally use these pop-up controls in our custom effects and our pseudo effects. And I hope that you guys find this to be useful. If you have any questions or anything about the pop-up control, feel free to leave a comment or send me an email at contact at batchframe.com. Keep your eye out for new stuff on the site. I'm working on a couple of new things right now that have to do with pseudo effects, and I'm hoping to get those out pretty soon. But yeah, that's really it for this video. Like always, my name is Jesse Tula for BatchFrame.com, and I will see you in the next one.